Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lockdown Flames. The Calgary Flames are kicking off a four-game homestand tonight against the Colorado Avalanche, who are not looking much like themselves these days. And we are going to dissect the four-game homestand with uh, some must-win games here at the Saddle Dome. And we have to talk about the Ivan Provorov situation coming out of Philadelphia here on Lockdown Flames. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Locked On Flames. Whether this is your first time or your 486th, time. I believe this is the 486th episode today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, uh, whether you're listening on your preferred podcasting service or if you're watching on YouTube. Hello. It's nice to see you. And uh, well, I don't know what you I'm not seeing you. You're seeing me. But thanks for hanging out and make sure you leave a comment to uh, let me know where you're watching from and how you heard about the show. But If you haven't done that yet, make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well so we can talk. But uh, today we do have to talk about a few things, and we're going to start off with Ivan Provorov's uh, statements and just kind of the problem with hockey is for everyone. And I implore, implore you to listen to locked on Philadelphia Flyers because they did an excellent, excellent job talking about this and are so articulate and incredible. Uh, Rachel and uh, Ross over there do a great job. But uh, before we start, this is not about being woke, leaning in to the quote unquote alphabet mafia It is about supporting and giving a soft place to land for an underrepresented minority in hockey and throughout most of sports. For those of you who don't know and have maybe been living under a rock for the last 24 hours, last night was or I guess Tuesday night was the Hockey is for Everyone Pride Night uh, at the Wells Fargo Center and Ivan Provorov cited religious reasons to not wear a rainbow pride jersey during warm-ups. Um, I, I'm going to say this. I understand that everyone is entitled to their opinions, but your religion is not a mask or a shield for bigotry. If you find yourself supporting a religion that has very uh, bigoted views and causes discrimination, then I I am going to question why you would align yourself with something so hateful. Um, again, this is about bigotry. You know, this isn't about, um, you know, wokeness or anything like that. It is, it's really a problem with the the NHL and culture in general, I think, you know, people are persecuted for being gay and being trans and the hate crimes that happen because of that. You know, I believe Provorov said that he is a Russian Orthodox. And last time I checked, there are not any current... Um, you know, persecutions of Russian Orthodox folks. But one story comes greatly to mind when discussing things like homophobia, and that would be the story of Matthew Shepard, who was um, brutally, brutally murdered for being gay. And that is why we have nights like Pride Night, to honor those who have fallen and who unfortunately fell a victim to 
bigotry and unacceptable homophobia and behavior. It's just, it's so frustrating to sit here and try to have to explain why, um, you know, you, ch you choose your religion. You don't choose your sexuality. You don't choose your identity. Um, you know, you don't choose to be trans. You don't choose to be gay or bisexual. You choose to align yourself with certain beliefs and to follow those beliefs is just a really unacceptable and it, it's upsetting and torts kind of doubled down on it and said you know i support him for standing up for what he believes in but at the same time when players wanted to kneel for the anthem he said that he would scratch and bench them so do with that information what you will um you know, if we're going to have military appreciation nights, I think we should certainly honor marginalized communities as well. Simple as that. But again, your religion is not a mask. You don't get to hide behind that. You hold those beliefs. You. You have a right to, you know, freedom of religion, but you're aligning yourself with a certain group that is hateful that doesn't want, that doesn't believe in, you know, gay marriage or that people should have gender affirming care or that, you know, just, it's just plain intolerance. That's really what it comes back to. And I don't, I don't know how many times I can say it, but it's just, it's unacceptable. And I really think if, we want to make a difference, we can go donate to the Trevor Project. That is a fantastic, fantastic resource for LGBTQ uh, plus um, teenagers and even adults. So I, I donated a good portion of June's revenue to them when I did my Pride episode with Hannah Carpenter. So I really implore you to do that as well um, if you can. And coming up next, you know, we are going to swing back into the Calgary Flames homestand. And before we do that, I do just want to say thank you uh, to our next partners at Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and quickest way to get caught up with all the odds, news, and scores when it comes to placing your sports bet. You can absolutely find everything you need on your mobile device or on the website. And you know, the wild card games are over for the NFL, and we are moving on to some divisional stuff. So, um, you know, you're going to want to get in on that. And, of course, you know, I, I told y'all not to bet for the Cowboys, and they won. So I'm going to say again, don't bet on the Cowboys again, please. <laughs> so head on over to Bet Online today to learn more about all the sports bets you can place today. Bet Online, where the game starts. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Flames. You can follow along with me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. So, Puck drops in about an hour from when I'm recording this, and they face off against the Avs tonight. The Avs have been, a uh, obviously, reigning Stanley Cup champions, and they have been dinged up beyond belief. I was looking at their injuries, and Gabe Landeskog is out. Uh, Byram and I was looking like they have significant names out for a long period of time and I think that that's going to I think that truly plays an impact on their role in the division right now they're fifth in the central and you know the Colorado Avalanche have been so dominant for so long that it, it almost feels weird and this game does feel a little bit winnable um you know, they don't have Darcy Kemper. <laughs> so, you know, the Flames usually get goalied by Darcy Kemper. But what, uh, you know, they, they're they hurting. So let's make it hurt a little bit worse with some goals. I think the Flames can, you know, do that. I think it's manageable. But they need to remember that they're playing in front of Jacob Markstrom tonight and maybe play a little bit of a tighter game. I would say that out of these next four games, 
you have the Avalanche, Tampa, Gaudreau's homecoming, and Chicago coming right up. I would say at least three of those are winnable. I I don't think that this, that this team is fast enough to play Tampa to keep up with Tampa. Uh, but I would say you need to you need every single point that you can get here. And especially with the teams that are in the West, you know, you, the Avs in Chicago, like the, those are no brainers that you need to get to steal points from. But this is, this might be a hot take. I posted this on Twitter and people were like, no, we saw how this went when there was, uh, you know, the shortened season. But I really wish that there was more of an emphasis on divisional games. Or even conference games. Like, we don't just have to stick within the division, but, you know, to pull it back a little bit more, uh, conference games. I would love to be watching the Flames and Oilers go at it right now instead of their regular regular season meetings ending in December. I think that it would put such a competitive force on an even more competitive force on the season like it's such a long season and I understand you know you want to play here you want to whatever you got to make your money somehow but it would be so much better to watch these teams play each other five or six times a year yeah it felt boring and monotonous when there was no variety into that shortened season so of course you're going to be bored of it do you know how miserable it was watching this team play Ottawa and only I I think they lost six out of eight games to Ottawa that year and it was miserable okay it was miserable but to do it in you know to be able to go up against you know the the blues more often or to go up against the wild and the preds like that would be so much fun and I think it would make even you know the wild card race even more unexpected I think it would just be a lot more fun but that's again that's a whole nother tangent and the flames here really need to find a way to win and walk away with at least a point against Tampa and Tampa only you should be winning the games against the avalanche against Columbus you if you lose to Columbus at home do you know how embarrassing that is that is humiliating and Chicago, you are you just embarrassed yourself in Chicago. So you want you want them to come do it here? You can't be letting these these bottom of the barrel teams win their Stanley Cup in January, okay? You just you have to keep pushing. And that's the thing. You have to play like you want to win, like you want to be in the playoffs. You can't play like you are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know you can coast into the postseason. You can't play like that. That's not, it's not going to be a recipe for success. And again, there, I really think that there should be more of an emphasis on playing teams um, in your own division or conference versus playing these really sucky teams from the East. And that's that. But uh, I don't know. I would just really like to see finding this team to find a way to win each of these games. If they can go on a four game winning streak or a four game point streak, chef's kiss. I would love to see that. You know, they need to find a, they need to regather themselves after that road trip and kind of bring it back, (laughs) bring it back to where it, where they need to be and recenter themselves. And coming up next, we are going to talk about players to watch this homestand. And thank you so much for hanging out with me at Lockdown Flames. Uh, remember to tune in and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I am going to say this. Your players to watch are going to be your goaltenders. Those are my first two biggest players to watch. I, you know, Jacob Markstrom is starting tonight. He's kicking off the homestand after kind of fumbling a little bit in front of uh, Nashville. And I just, I really think that this team plays such a different game in front of each goaltender. 
they play a much tighter, competitive, faster game in front of Ladar. And they get kind of sloppy and lazy in front of Markstrom. And I don't understand why. Uh, it's it's very strange. And I wish that they would play tighter defense in front of Markstrom. <laughs> I really do. Because sometimes I look at what's going on there and I'm just like, what what was the reason for this, truly? Like, what what did you anticipate here? And you're wondering why you're losing. But on the flip side, I have uh, Nikita Zadorov as well heading into Wednesday night. He has three goals in the last seven games. And I would say I've never said a bad thing about Nikita Zadorov, but I, I have and I own that. And uh, sometimes it is well-deserved and much needed. So, you know, keep an eye on the big man. I think that he is more than likely going to be eating up some more minutes. I think if there was a way to move him up in the in the pairings, <laughs> Daryl Sutter would. I, I truly think he would. He loves Nikita Zadorov. Uh, again, big six foot, 200 something pound guy. Uh, I'm sure he's missing Brett Ritchie at the moment as well. And of course, I just, uh, Rasmus Anderson, like, how can you not watch this Flames power play and be like, just completely blocking everything out? Like, you have blinders on and only focus on Rasmus Anderson. I think that he is an excellent uh, hockey player all around. He's really coming to, uh, you know, another level of his game this year. And we just got to keep watching for it. I think that he has truly um, taken steps even in the leadership aspect of things. And, of course, my two forwards are line – or yeah, they're line mates with uh, Nazem Kadri, who leads the team with points. I believe it's 40 points. Let me double-check that. No, he leads the team in goals, sorry, with 17 goals. Elias Lindholm leads with 40 points. And um, I do just have to say that Nazem Kadri has been an excellent fit to this team since coming in from the Avs in free agency. And I'm, I really like what him and Huberto are cooking up. I do think that things would be a little bit better if they had someone of a little bit higher caliber on their line but that is just me and how many times can I beat that horse to death Jonathan Huberto is also heating up and playing very well I know that he started the season off slow and people are like well he's not that 11.5 million dollar player yet and it's like I get that but we shouldn't be judging him based on his salary at the moment um you brought him in here long term after a career year. And like Nick Zarara said yesterday on the show, he is only going to be <sighs> declining. <laughs> and that's just because that's what happens when you're <laughs> when on the wrong side of 30. But I do think that Huberto is doing great. And I really, really, really hope that the Flames bring in another top six winger to complement that line. And that is all I have for you today here at Locked on Flames, and I greatly appreciate it. And uh, just a reminder to listen to Locked on Flyers, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.